this is Karen with Midlona USA. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Before I get started, I want to tell you that this is kind of a add-on to a blog post we made on menstrual cup materials. And the blog post itself, of course, is much more able to show you links and sources and technical information that we can't show you in this video. So I'd highly encourage you to visit Meluna USA, no spaces, just melunausa.blog and check out our blog post on menstrual cup materials because it's much more in depth. It can um, link you to certain sources and much better explain technical parts than I can hear in this video. But what I can do in this video is show you how menstrual cups are made and that's kind of exciting. So today we are doing a little bit of an arts and crafts thing here. And we will start with silicone. Silicone menstrual cups are generally made from two compounds. And these two compounds are mixed. Go ahead and mix some of this right in here. And the important part about this, and this is why I'm showing you this, once these two compounds are mixed, they are permanently together. This is it. You cannot unmix this. All right. So I am going to combine this. And once it's combined, this is it. No uncombining this. Okay. I will pour this in my mold, which happens to be a tart mold. Um, in about six hours from now, ta-da, we made silicone something, okay? Flexible, bendy, very heat resistant, uh, which is why it's used so much in cooking stuff, baking things. Um, super heat resistant and super durable, and it will be here for eternity um, because silicone cannot be recycled. Once these things are combined, they are uncombined. Um, I guess you could shred it and use it as a filler for something, but you cannot use this again to make silicone again. This is done. Um, this also factors in when you make menstrual cups, because when you make menstrual cups, like you can see on this Maluna, uh, there's always little bits and pieces that are instantly trash. And in a silicone cup, that is instantly trash. Trash that is here to stay for a really, really long time. So that is how you make silicone cups. TBE cups are made from TBE and they're still TBE after they're made. So there's no changes going on. They're coming uh, little pellets like this and then they're molding. And they can be remelted and that's really cool. And I actually made something here for you to show you how this works. It's like a mini injection molding system, but it's actually just, I stuffed a um, glue gun with uh, chipped up Meluna. And don't worry, I used a color sample, so I didn't destroy a good Meluna. I chopped it up, I stuffed it in this thing, and now it's 410 degrees, which makes it melt. And I can now squeeze out the Meluna material and reshape it to something else. And I did, I did. Did you see what I made here? I made us a holiday um, sticks thing out of Meluna cups. And if you're thinking now, wow, I hope these people are better at making cups than they are at making Pinterest crafts. Yes, we are. Uh, also, in case this looks like fun, it really is. Um, is it safe? No. You should definitely not cut up your cup and stick it into glue guns to melt them and do things because I'm pretty sure it's not safe. You can burn yourself, you can destroy your glue gun, don't do it. Then now you're probably wondering, so how are rubber cups made? And there's the weird thing. Uh, they sound like they would be the most natural option, but in order to turn rubber from trees, into a usable product, you actually have to um, use a process called vulcanization. And vulcanization often 
involves a lot of toxic byproducts so we will not be making rubber things right now um, and you can read more about this process on a link from our uh, blog, uh, blog post sorry about that and I'd highly encourage you to check that out it's pretty interesting now the next thing in regards to the environmental impact is that of course with TDE being able to be remote, a lot of the um, waste that is made with latex cups or silicone cups doesn't even factor in with the TDE cups because little things like that can be immediately remolded. Uh, any kind of TDE that is left over is highly recyclable. It can either be made into TDE again or it can be used to fortify other materials. So it's, it's not super common yet, but it is very popular to fortify other recycling materials. So very um, zero waste product in the protection as far as TBE goes. Also to consider is the other environmental impact that different menstrual cups have. For example, latex, of course, needs to be grown. That means um, native forests are cut down and um, monoculture forests are being planted to meet that need for rubber and that often results in real big environmental impact in those areas where these are grown with silicone of course silicone is a completely synthetic material so there's not this impact it is however very labor intensive and energy intensive actually. So most of the manufacturing of the raw material for silicone happens still in Asia and there's only four big companies that really make the raw materials for silicone and I listed those on our blog post as well. You can read up on that. Uh, even companies that say hey we make our silicone menstrual cups in the US what they're talking about is they get the compounds from one of these four companies and then manufacture, mix these two compounds like I just did in the US. Um, Maluna makes their cups in Germany and the major, really the only big manufacturer of medical grade TVE is also in Germany. So they're close to each other. Maluna also produces their own energy on top of the factory building. Um, Germany is really big on solar panels and things like that. So TVE is also very energy efficient in regards to the production part. Now you're probably thinking, gosh, that's all really great, but I want a cup that's safe and we want you to have a, have a cup that's safe as well. So let's address those issues. With silicone, uh, there are a couple of compounds that can cause problems with hormone balance in your body and so can with TBE. With TBE, the component that is worrisome in regards to hormone balance is plasticizers and that's why Cryborg, the manufacturer of the medical grade TBE, does not use plasticizers in the medical grade TBE. To show you what kind of an impact that makes, medical grade TBE is 700% more expensive than regular TBE just because of the substitutions that have to be made and the purity that is required of a medical grade TBE versus TBE used for yoga mats and things like that. The same holds true for silicone. Uh, the compounds that cause some worry there are the siloxanes D4 and D5, which also can be endocrine disruptors. And you can find links to those as well on our blog post. So the really important part is to get, if you're getting a TBE cup, get one that you know is made from medical grade TBE that does not contain plasticizers. And if you're getting a silicone cup, make sure you're getting it without those were some components as well. How can you make sure that you're getting a safe cup? I 
would strongly advise you to get a FDA cleared and registered cup. I know advertising can be fairly, um, people are not always true in their advertising. And I see so many cups on Amazon that drive me crazy that have the label of FDA approved. That should be your first red flag. The FDA does not approve menstrual cups. Um, menstrual cups are FDA cleared and then the facility and the product is FDA registered. But FDA approved is just not a thing in menstrual cups. And as soon as you see that on an eBay listing or an Amazon listing, you know they are not being truthful with you. And there's so much more than just using a medical grade component. Um, so just saying you have a medical grade silicone does not make it the whole finished product a suitable medical device. So even if you do not choose medical devices by Maluna here for us in Maluna Unis A, I would strongly advise you to check out the FDA website if you're thinking of a certain brand. Plug in the name and see what comes up. And if that name of the product you're looking for is not on the FDA website, if you are a US consumer, I would stay away from that because you do not know what's in that. And it's $25 that you're spending now and for a product that you'll be using once a month for the next few years. I think that's really a good investment in your health and it's probably not the right place to save a few bucks to buy a product of unknown origin and unknown ingredients for a few bucks less. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope you will stick with us and subscribe to our channel. But also for this one especially, check out the blog. We have lots of links on that blog post that you may find helpful and as a starting point for further investigation. Thanks so much for sticking with me so long. This is our longest video yet. I hope you didn't find it too long. And if you have any comments, just leave some comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks so much.